Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you my go-to cards for inner shadow work and other tools as well. These are the decks and tools I use in striving to learn and be the best version of myself. For me, shadow work is always an ongoing lesson, whether it be old or new. It's something that is constantly there. We can't ignore in our development. There are times, especially when it when we are going through new transformation taking place, you feel stuck in your development, can't move any deeper. Um, moonlight to me helps to shine a light on these inner workings. I tend to think of shadow work as inner maintenance. I believe the more you learn to embrace your darkness, which is part of being a human being, the more constructive use and control we gain opposed to none and our darkness imprisoning us. Authenticity of a human being is both light and dark, in my personal opinion. So in this video, I'm going to kind of share what I use from time to time. Just a brief summary, nothing too in-depth. If there is any decks that you would like me to do a separate video on, please let me know. Journaling is a massive part of my spiritual journey and self-development, something I highly recommend. I tend to have more than one journal for shadow work specifically. Um, one that you have here on the left is for deep diving in. The journal itself looks the part and I just love this old look that it has to it and feel. Um, you don't necessarily have to have journals that looks like this. This is just me sharing, you know, what I use. The second journal is much bigger. One I use for my overall general progression. It's secure, customizable, where you can change the pages. And it comes with a nice sort of like pen slot as well. So that one, again, it's something that I use that I kind of keep a progress as to, you know, how far I've come and what's going on with me. And then I have a small one, palm size, for taking notes, but mainly for tracking how my mind can so quickly turn into a place of negativity. So all of these kind of help me to analyze my shadow. So it's highly recommended. Um, Basically, try to incorporate some form of journaling in your in your practice. Another journal I incorporate is my gratitude journal. Gratitude is critical. It has played a massive role in making me see how my shadow in reality is my ally. Something that can be very hard to see in terms of the integration opportunity, um, especially the parts that are there to protect you, that we tend to look away and it grows into monsters or the devil and comes back later on to kind of really challenge you. Now, just a quick one. Crystals and gemstones is highly recommended for healing, grounding work and balance or to provide a boost of energy. And some of these here are ones that I tend to use, um, mainly, I guess, hematite or um, the amethyst tends to connect me um, quite deeply with my intuition. So they have various different to, um uh, attributes to them. So crystal work is one that's, I, I think it's also important when it comes to the shadow work of things. Not always, but sometimes I do use Toro. Um, my go-to would be the Meriel Toro, the Sasorobito, and the uh, Chronicles of Destiny deck, which is like a hybrid of Oracle and Toro. Um, so those would be kind of like the ones from time to time I do tend to use, but not primarily the main ones. So the Chronicles of Destiny, I think, is a great deck. Um, it helps me to gain insight into problem problematic situations. And what I love about it, it kind of like tends to pinpoint out problems Um kind of bring that awareness to it. The deck is absolutely beautiful, great quality. Um, so it's something that I'm thinking of doing a sort of like a flip through of, but the images in itself, it kind of like highlights a lot of the general themes of shadow work or things that you will encounter or can easily relate to and the messages that it kind of holds. So it's an absolute beautiful deck. Um, I find to work with in the Toro form. And the book as well is quite straightforward. By all means, uh, pause and kind of read bits of whatever you can see. But again, I will be doing a separate video to highlight uh, more of this card. Um, but it, again, it pinpoints the problem, goes directly to the cause of the situation. It doesn't shy away from making you aware of, you know, what's upcoming, what's going on around you. The Mary El Toro another great um, 
Toro deck, excellent for shadow work. Great for self-awareness. It's raw with its message and image. The type of deck that makes you face the monster in the closet or under the bed. Um, but also what I love about this deck is it teaches you to recognize that within the present moment, all that you could ever need to feed yourself and your soul is present within your heart. So there's there's a lot of um, awareness that's been brought into the present moment uh, to remind you, don't think about the past, don't think about the, the future. It's what's right in front of you and inside of you. Great deck. The next Toro deck is the Sasarabito um, Toro. Um, um, a deck, I don't always use it from time to time, maybe, but it's one of those deck um, that helps in searching for a place of healing and refuge. I find it to be more kind of a deck opposed to um, the other cards that will give you a slap. A deck about more about the emotional intelligence. Now, the main cards I use are these Oracle decks, Deep Dive, Unveiling, In Your Face, and a Reality Check. But most importantly, how to embrace the origins of our shadow, exploring our inner world of the shadow, and seeing how beneficial it is to us. Season of the Witch Oracle has become my number one primary deck for shadow work. I highly recommend this deck, a fantastic deck to explore all of the hidden parts, be it the past, the present, the things hidden, untouched. This deck has taught me how to cooperate with my darkness in being my ally. The deck is the deck is like a teacher. It unveils so much. To be honest, I believe you can gain a lot more from this deck alone without the need of the other decks that I'm going to show you that I uh, I used to use a lot of or the ones that I've just covered. It's a full package personally. All you could gain from the Toro, it's here. It connects you, heals, guides, provides means of protection, truths that are not as harsh, but they are there. Um, also, I love how there is many spreads specifically that gives you a lot to seek and discover, empower you to embrace who you are, what is hidden that is of benefit to you and you alone. So there's so much that you gain from this deck and, you know, which is why it's my like go to and, you know, the primarily deck. Even when you look into the book, I'll give you an example. Here we have the card of the owl. Um, I'll stop slight. I'll slow down slightly, but here you get you can pause and you get to read, get a feeling and and a kind of like an and an idea of what the messages are like. But it's quite simple to understand, um, easy for you to kind of like analyze and dive and go to and really work with that card specifically around the type of energy or uh, shadow aspect of yourself that you need to kind of like you know pay attention to uh, work with and face it provides both an upright meaning and a reversal as well and the reversal again it's um it's 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 a great type of sort of like reverse message to work with it's again it does hit you in certain places but it's not as harsh um as a lot of these other sort of like um decks another example here is the journey card at number 24 you get your keywords again you have these kind of spell cast or these uh small poetry sort of like written on these deck here finding your purpose in life is a lot like waiting for christmas you have to walk your path trust in the gifts that you wait for you the um, we're trusting the gifts that wait for you. Um, all will be revealed when the time is right. So you get kind of like a little summary as to what's going on in your circumstance, uh, situation currently, uh, presently. And then it kind of like gradually breaks that circumstance down. Um, failures and mistakes are investments you make in yourself. 
they cost you now but will save you a lot more so you know it kind of like teaches you through guides you through the various different steps of the things that you need to face up to or deal with and then and again like i said the spreads there's so many there's literally so many we've got an interview spread interview spread is something i recommend that we all you you do with all of your decks uh trying to kind of like build that connection with your card you've got um the graveyard spread a spread as it states there to help you in kind of gaining guidance in the difficult times and changes that one goes through especially during the time of uh, transformational change taking place you've got the spiritual council spread again that connects you with your ancestors and your guides finding ways to work with them connect with them receiving spiritual guidance and so on you've got a reclaiming my power spread as well it's all about again um, gaining back your power, bringing that empowerment back into yourself. You've got the rotten apple spread, all around protection, transformation spread. There's just X amount of spreads to work with um, when it comes to this deck. I mean, it's awesome. Now, I do have a video that um, I did a while back on this deck. So watch out for that one. I will hopefully upload it this week. But highly recommended deck fantastic for shadow work and all other uh, regular guidance as well so it's one that i highly recommend so that is um the witch uh, season of the witch oracle dark goddess oracle um is my go-to deck for really challenging times change and various levels of personal growth uh, it's a great deck to summon empowerment, um, revealing the truth and seeing opportunities of real transformation. With this deck, there is no fluffiness, um, no hiding or anything superficial. Messages can be harsh. <laughs> um, it doesn't shy away from telling you um, as it is um point it, it, you know the, this deck doesn't it it, 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 will literally, it will literally point the finger back at you to take responsibility for a lot of the shit you may be going through and as much as i love the seasons of the witch oracle i love this deck as well and its unique approach um, a bonus to this deck as well is learning about all the different goddesses from all the ancient cultures and time. Just to give you an idea here again, by all means, pause. So you get to learn about the goddess, its name. You've got small sort of mantra affirmation. And here it's kind of like a breakdown. You've got the general sort of like summary of the card and then you've got like uh, the kind of message from that goddess. So that here you've got careful for... You are about to be swept away. Um, it warns you about various things that's taking place. It reveals to you the hidden darkness of situations and things. It provides you an alert. It brings you the sense of awareness, kind of like of the real deeper hidden things that's going on in the background. Here we've got, again, pause if you like. Guiding someone from the truth is not helping them right now. Focus on your own ability to listen rather than your need to lecture. Um, yeah, that's, again, the a lot of the other messages are very harsh. So this one is an absolutely great deck. I do love this deck. I've got a video in the making, so watch out for that one as well, which I did a while back. Here we've got another card. Underneath that you'll have a mantra or ritual uh, spell. Um, and then the card gives you a summary of what the goddess is kind of like trying to relay back to you. And then under the, the foresight is pretty much the message right in your face. You know, stop spending money like water. Don't fight for what you cannot change. Look before you leap. Find out more about the person you are getting close to. So again provides a lot of insight you know it will show you a lot of the sort of like things decision you're making that is not of your best interest or of any benefit to you 
So it's an absolutely great deck. Look out for that one when I upload the vids. The Power of Surrender card. This is another great deck that helps you in letting go. Surrendering to divine timing of things, not your timing. Um, to flow with things instead of clinching to them, obsessing over things or being over controlling of things. This is a great old deck that will help you on a daily basis from sabotaging yourself. Um, it's a deck I use first thing in the morning at times. It's simple. You don't need to go into any book. The message is directly on the cards. It covers pretty much all of the things one would need to let go of and trust in the divine, the universe, whatever it is for you. It's an absolute brilliant card. It's great quality, um, solid. Message are very clear. Um, and you learn so much. You know, the more you use it, the more you build a connection and the more you get to learn about yourself in the way you approach things, the way you react to things, things that sometimes you tend to kind of like get too carried away or too involved in certain situation. And rather than bring out, bringing out the best of yourself, you bring out the worst of yourself by kind of like clinching on too much to this particular belief that you may have or in disagreeing with somebody, you know, you just don't want to let go of allowing someone else to have control or you to lose that sense of control. So this is um, a deck that I really highly recommend. It's one that you have to have kind of like a combination of the other two that I showed. It does have its essential part. And again, letting go is an important part of shadow work. Dark Mirror Oracle, a fantastic shadow oracle deck because it's raw and pretty intense. Um, a deck that truly encourages you to look inside of yourself and shine light on the darker parts of your situation. It pretty much tells it the way it is. You know, it, it doesn't shy from um, kind of like blatantly telling you, look, yeah, this has happened, but you know what? You've got to get on with your life. You've got to get on with it. You've got to see the positive of it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of like it's unique sort of uh, traits with this deck and which is why I love it as well and I do use it um, just to give you an idea of its messages so you get various different phases of the moon and you know what the card is trying to tell you here it's kind of trying to tell you to un, you know un, to accept what has happened breaking up that how sooner or later one of the two person is going to break up it's how we do it some people do it inside with actually taking action others tend to blatantly do it you can cry about it you could get angry about it because you've lost a lot you had so much relied on but at the end of the day you kind of got to get on with it and this is pretty much the way these cards come across now what i always do as well is i use the magic of you oracle which is quite similar to the dark mirror in conjunction together um, again, both decks have that intense imagery to them. It's raw and it tends to kind of reveal or tell you things the way it is. And it's not afraid to point the finger back at you in, you know, in you taking responsibility. Here is a, an example of one of the cards. It simply tells you stop being a selfish person, how you're being selfish and angry about somebody else having the things that you want to have or that you don't have and how you know you need to learn to kind of like have um, more of appreciation for others and of yourself it's a great deck for shadow work and there's a lot you can learn and lastly a big part of shadow work is also to initiate healing the decks I have used for many years that works for me are Angel Therapy Deck, Enchanted Map, and Work Your Light Oracle. The Angel Therapy, I've had this for over 10 years. It's It's been a massive part of um, healing for me. Um, it's an excellent uh, deck for initiating healing and releasing emotional blocks and fears 
walks you through the action steps. It's an absolutely great deck. You don't initially have to go into the booklet. The messages are there on the cards and it's easy to kind of like build a connection with and work with. The other um, awesome deck is Work Your Light Oracle which again is absolutely awesome. It makes a great combination of the, the, the two decks that I use for healing, but it's, um, it's, a, a, it's a deck that uh, works with your intuition, having the alignment of who you truly are. A beautiful deck that helps your soul back into the everyday life and everything else. And lastly, we have the Enchanted Map excellent to connect you to the journey especially when it comes to the unseen various forces it's a deck that will assist you in the coordination of your journey uh, the deck represents some of the places you'll travel good or bad conditions the people that you may encounter um, so overall it's a it's a great deck to help you understand your fate so that was it guys for this video i hope you've enjoyed this i know it's slightly different i will be uploading more videos this week and some of the cards that you've seen today will be part of that if there is others you want me to kind of um, upload just let me know leave some the comments below love and light to all of you and i really hope that you've enjoyed this video um take care